Today I will show how remote control interrupter or switch works. I have here remote control with different buttons that can be configured in a different manner and activate this interrupter in different ways. There are several modes that are easily configured on the receiver and I will show you how to do this. And depending on the mode, the way these buttons act on the receiver may differ. This remote control interrupters or switches can be used in garages, in different home devices, in lights, and in my case I will be using it in a toy. For example, this one. This is a train and it has a switch here, a manual switch. But when it's on a track and you try to turn it on and off, sometimes it slides over the tracks. A better way to control this train would be to add a remote control. But first of all, let me show you how the remote control can be configured. Let me connect this multimeter to the receiver. So the receiver has four wires. These are input wires and these are output wires. So I will put this multimeter to the direct voltage mode and connect these two wires to the multimeter. When we activate the interrupter we will see some indications here. Now I have the receiver connected to the multimeter and this receiver can support a range of voltage. It supports a range starting from 3.6 volts to 24 volts. So I have here a 3.7 volt battery and I will connect it to this receiver. It is important to connect the correct wires. Red wire with red wire, black wire with the black wire to avoid burning the circuits on the board. So now I have the battery connected to the receiver as well and let's now configure how this remote control will control the receiver. So there are three modes. Let's check if the remote control is affecting the receiver in any way. When we press the button we see no movement here, no indications, no voltage change. Now let's try the first mode, pressing this button once. We see the LED light here and we choose one of the buttons. Now we confirm the first mode. Now what's going to happen? It is a so-called momentary mode, which means that when you press this button, the power will flow until you keep it pressed. I press the button, I keep it pressed and we see voltage here. When I release the button, no power is supplied. Now let's set up a second mode, which is a so-called toggled mode. We need to push this button twice. And now confirm. What will happen now is by pressing the button you activate power and by pressing it again you deactivate it. So let's see. Pressed once and no voltage here. Pressed one more time, voltage appears again. This is the mode I will use for the train. Let's check the third mode, so-called latched mode. We need to press this button three times. In this case I have to choose two buttons, one and two. Now when I press this button first, we let the power flow to the cables and we have voltage here. And to turn it off, I have to use another button. And the voltage doesn't appear here anymore, so power is off now. And to delete all this configuration, you need to press this button eight times.
and as you can see now the remote control is not doing anything to the receiver let me activate the second mode again now by pressing one button I will turn the power on and off on off also one thing to keep in mind is that the input will be equal to output for example now I connected a 7.4 volt battery and if I turn it on the output will be equal to the input in this case it's 7.6 this battery is fully charged so the indications are a bit higher than 7.4 volts now let me show you how you can easily install this remote switch or interrupter in a toy train. Normally this train works with two batteries. I turn it on and I turn it off. These two batteries make up around 2.5 volts, but our remote interrupter works with at least 3.6 volts which means that this train will run faster and if you have some circuits inside like music effects, sound effects, circuits, they can burn so make sure you don't burn anything let me just connect it directly to this train but if you don't want to burn anything don't do that make sure you first of all choose the correct resistors and the resistors usually look like this you can pick up several of them if needed, connect them in series and add them between the connections of the toy and the receiver. And I will show you how to do that later in a separate video. But now I will just connect directly the remote interrupter to the train and show you how easily you can actually install a remote control on a toy. So I will just remove these batteries and I have this here two connectors which go to the electrical motor. I'll turn the switch on for now and uh, in my case now it's a very easy installation so when I connect this receiver to the train it, the power will be always like on to make it better you have to connect one of the battery connectors to the switch here to make sure that it's not always connected to the battery so when you don't play with the train your receiver is not getting power but now for the demonstration purposes I will do it in a very easy manner just to show how it will work so I already have this connection here of course here you have to be careful uh, not to short anything but for now for demonstration purposes I'm doing it in this way the perfect way would be to have another connector here which I will do later but what's important here let me disconnect it first and connect this receiver to the train So you will know which is plus here and which is minus and I would just put it here so I have these two contacts touching the contacts of the train okay now I have everything connected and let me turn it on As you can see the train wheels are rotating very fast so we will have to add some resistors to lower the voltage a little bit. 